Okay, so there's three big secrets that I'm going to um, present. One, you should not focus on paying off your mortgage before starting your savings for retirement. Number two, compound interest is the most powerful yet misunderstood tool. It makes the poor poorer and the rich richer. And number three, you do not need a large income to become wealthy. You may have heard this expression, it's not the size that matters, it's what you do with it that matters. So the following example will demonstrate, number one, why you should not focus on paying off your mortgage before starting your savings for retirement. And I, created this scenario, I know what happens with many people is they only have enough money to pay their mortgage. So they don't have extra money to start putting into savings. And what I, so what I'm gonna show you in this scenario is what you could do in that case where you don't have extra money. Okay, so I created an example. So take an individual age 30, purchase a house, and the mortgage is 200000 So in scenario one, which is what most people do, they get a mortgage for 25 years. I put it at 3%. That comes up to $947 per month. And they don't have any saving. Yeah. For 25 years, they don't put anything towards a savings. By age 55, so 25 years later, they've got no mortgage, but they also have no savings. In this scenario, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to assume that the, this individual gets an interest-only mortgage, which you may not be familiar with, but it is an option. The interest rate is normally a, just a little bit higher because there's a little more risk. So I put it at 4%. So the interest on the 200,000 mortgage comes up to $667 per month. What I'm gonna assume is you're still gonna spend the same $947 per month that you were spending over here, but you're gonna take that difference and you're gonna put that into a savings. So that comes up to $280 a month for 25 years. And I'm going to put it at 8%, which is a very, um, what would I say, um, safe percentage rate. I'm not over-exaggerating. Easily and probably closer to 10%, but we'll just do it at eight. So by age 55, over here, you, your mortgage is paid, but you have no savings. Over here, you, you would still have your 200,000 mortgage because all you've been paying is the interest. But your savings is $268,000. So that comes up to a net of $68,000. So your savings minus your mortgage is $68,000. So would you like an extra $68,000? I would. Now, we're gonna continue on the scenario because in, in this uh, scenario, I'm assuming once their mortgage is paid off, now they're gonna start paying savings for retirement. So for the next 10 years, if you look over here in scenario one, uh, they take that $947 a month and they put it away. Now, I only put it at 6% because if you only have 10 years until retirement, you can't put it into the same funds that you would put in if you were only 30 years old and, and you had 25 years. So I put it down at 6%. At age 65, you would have $155,970, which is not bad, but I don't think you could retire on that unless you have a pension. So in scenario two, they continue with their mortgage because 
they never paid off their mortgage. They, they still have their mortgage and they're still just paying the same interest. So it's $667 mortgage and they just continue with what they were doing before, $280 a month. I put it at the same rate of 6%. So by age 65, you've still got your mortgage, but your savings are 533,830. That's a net of 333,830. If you were to take your savings, pay off your mortgage, uh, the net is 333,000. So if I take the 333 and I minus the 155, you end up with an extra 177,860. So would you like an extra 177,860 at retirement? All right. So that scenario just shows you what you could do if you don't have extra to put towards a savings. And of course, if you, the more you put towards your uh, retirement,